We challenge you. See, in today's episode, myself and Ben Mellinger of the awesome art channel, Ben Mellinger Art, are going to be drawing our own superhero teams facing off in an epic superhero brawl. And it's a brawl that you can all get in on as well. But more on that at the end. First things first, what I'm gonna do for my half of this piece is I'm gonna take a bunch of my old original characters and redesign them into a well-balanced team of heroes. Plus, during the drawings in my video, I'm gonna be telling the story of how all these characters met and what they were doing during a little forgotten event of mine called the Multiverse War. I'm gonna have all my characters facing off to the left, send the piece over to Ben Mellinger, and he's gonna draw all his characters facing off to the right, as if all the characters are about to collide. So this is a collab video. It's got superheroes. It's got a dragon, because one of my characters is kind of a dragon. It's gonna have a fun big story going through it. What more do you want? Nothing? Good. Then let's get into my half, and if you haven't seen it yet afterwards, I'll send you over to Ben Mellinger's channel to see his half. But for now, let's get into the art. Now just before we jump into the actual story and fleshing out the characters, I had to rough out a basic composition, because unlike my usual videos where I'm drawing four different pieces, this one is going to have all four characters in the same drawing. So I'm roughing out the composition for where the kid, Alexis Jones, Diamos, and Dragonoid are all gonna go in the piece, and then after that, I'll jump in and draw each of the characters individually while telling the story of how they fit into the multiverse war. So I got them all laid out in a way I like, this is what it turned out as, and now we can jump into our first character, Jake Tajan, aka The Kid. Prior to the Multiverse War, Jake Tajan only knew a handful of superpowered beings. Him and the team of young superheroes he led protected his relatively small city from minor threats like bank robberies and the occasional mech armored villain. See, he lived in a relatively normal world, and he, in fact, had been one of the very first superpowered beings on his world. After his family died in a car accident at a young age, he'd fled the scene in terror and ended up on the streets. He begged for money and would occasionally steal from nearby convenience stores, but never felt good about it. He swore one day he'd find a way to pay back the people he'd taken from. After living on the streets for nearly a year, he happened upon a strange glowing artifact while searching a dump for anything that he could find to salvage or sell. The artifact was a perfectly carved emerald that seemed to have some kind of moving, shifting fluid inside it. After Jake held it for only a moment, the gem sunk into his hand and shot waves of energy throughout his body. Jake soon found that the gem was giving him enhanced speed and strength and even flight, as well as the ability to project green, glowing energy from his hands. Fired quickly enough, he could use it as a powerful projectile, but carefully concentrated on, he could use it to heal wounds, both on himself and others. With these new abilities, he started patrolling the city, preventing any crime that he came across, and this ended up getting him some significant attention from citizens and the press, which eventually led to his mother's lawyer finding him and informing him that he had a significant inheritance that he'd been entitled to all this time, but nobody had been able to find him. With a vast fortune now backing him up, Jake had a costume made for himself and started taking the superhero gig more seriously. He eventually found more superpowered people his own age and brought them on to fight alongside with him. Together they fought some pretty interesting foes, but nothing compared to what came the day the Multiverse War began. Jake's world had no idea that there even was a multiverse of other worlds out there, which made it that much more of a shock the day that the sky clouded over with ash-filled portals spewing hundreds of thousands of demonic beasts and monsters onto his world. Like everyone else, Jake and his team were woefully unprepared for this fight. In the mayhem that ensued over the next weeks, the kid lost track of all his superhero friends, his city, and his world itself fell. And for the second time in his life, Jake was all alone. That is, until a new friend found her way to Jake's universe. Alexis Jones had been on the front lines of the multiverse war. 
Before ashen monsters had made their way to her world, Alexis's partner, Sterling and Jeel from the Agency of Supernatural Protection, had discovered the pending threat to the multiverse and joined a group of interdimensional heroes to save every world that they could. At 21 years old, Alexis had already experienced a significant amount of weirdness in her life. She had strength that matched that of the world's strongest bodybuilders, and obviously more impressive was her ability to attract and repel minerals to and from her body, an ability that Sterling referred to as mineral magnetism. She'd spent the last five years working for the Agency of Supernatural Protection, and she and Sterling had fought hundreds of demons together. They'd beaten hellhounds and ogres and even the occasional dragon, and on a few occasions had gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Satan himself, who's not quite as strong as you might think, but still pretty impressive. But that was all still a far leap from fighting monsters across a multiverse. But as long as her best friend Sterling was set to go help, she was willing to go as well. Of the two of them, she was the significantly superior fighter, and there was no way she was gonna let him go off unprotected. But after a series of battles with beasts across the multiverse, as they all tried to unravel why someone was setting near mindless beasts onto unsuspecting worlds, Alexis and the team found themselves in a fight they couldn't win. Alexis was knocked unconscious and thrown through a closing portal to an unknown realm of the multiverse. When she awoke, she was alone, with no way of knowing how she could possibly find her friends again. Sterling had always been the one obsessed with other dimensions and universes and the energies that allowed people to travel between them, but she'd at least listened enough to know the basics. Despite the planet she'd ended up on being nearly obliterated by monsters, it was luckily one that had perfected interdimensional travel at its peak. She scrounged up a damaged dimensional jumper that could transport her once every few days to a new world, and she started a near hopeless search for Sterling and the rest of the team. She focused on heading to dimensions that the team had mentioned heading to eventually, but of course most of these worlds were under imminent attack, so she had to fight her way through a lot of battles single-handedly. And while her odds of finding her friends was near impossible, she did manage to find some new friends. First coming across a young and distraught Jake Tajin on his recently destroyed world. The two fought off a squad of monsters together, and Jake had never seen a superpowered being as incredibly skilled as Alexis. Because his world was destroyed anyway, he asked to go with her on her journey. Alexis wasn't eager to babysit the young hero, but she knew that he needed someone, and admittedly, she too could use some company. He joined her on her quest, and together they continued searching the multiverse and trying their best to protect people in any dimension that they went to. Diemos had lived a complicated life. She was one of two daughters to Satan himself. Or, at least a being that many humans referred to as Satan on Alexis and Sterling's homeworld. His history is a bit too lengthy to get into here, but most importantly to say, he'd always had a vendetta against humans. One that Diamos had only ever pretended to share. Diamos, her sister Alia, and Lucifer lived in a pocket dimension adjacent to Alexis's world. It was a place Lucifer had been trapped in for thousands of years, despite him being a powerful multiverse energy crafter who had once been in charge of protecting the world that he now frequently sent supernatural demons to terrorize. Not to be confused with the multiverse monsters that we're currently dealing with, though there are some similarities. Alexis and Alia could leave the dimension, but Lucifer only allowed them to when they were helping him search for a long-lost artifact that would finally allow Lucifer to leave the pocket dimension. Diamos had nothing against humanity and was in fact fascinated by them, but she did want to help free her long-suffering father. This would eventually put Diamos up against Sterling and Alexis in battle, but after a few bouts against each other, a tenuous friendship would grow at least between Sterling and Diamos. 
Together, they could try and find a way to free Diamos' father, while also keeping him from destroying the world once he was freed. Alexis, though, never really loved the idea of freeing him, and was content to let him rot away in the pocket dimension because of all the suffering he'd caused her world. Diamos understood where Alexis was coming from and tried to be sympathetic, but the two never grew very close because of this. Which made things a little bit tricky in our present story. Alexis and Jake managed to find their way back to Alexis's homeworld in the hopes that Sterling might have come back in search of her, but they arrived to find that now her world was under attack by the monsters of the multiverse war. They fought alongside the other members of the Agency of Supernatural Protection, but it was hopeless. The world was being completely overwhelmed. When all seemed hopeless, Diamos appeared with a dimensional portal and urged all the remaining agents inside. Alexis was hugely skeptical of Diamos' intentions, but they had no other choice. Diamos did indeed bring all the survivors that she could to a safe world that hadn't yet been attacked. Alexis mourned her world, but she knew that she had to keep searching for Sterling and the team that was still close on the heels of figuring out how to stop this whole war. In spite of the help, she still didn't fully trust Diamos, but Diamos was eager to win Alexis over, and with an impressive set of skills she'd learned from her father, she could help Alexis and Jake navigate the multiverse and jump between dimensions quicker. Not to mention she was a pretty incredible fighter. Alexis agreed to let Diamos join their small but budding team of heroes, and they continued on their search. Dresden Gonzalez wouldn't exactly have been called a mad scientist, but he was pretty darn near close. He went to university at age 15 for mechanical engineering, and became an incredible inventor. His proudest achievement was building himself a mechanical set of wings that allowed him to soar through the air like his favorite mythical beasts, dragons. He eventually developed a foldable version that could shrink down to a small enough size for him to wear the wings on his back like a normal backpack, and after that, he wore them pretty much everywhere. But being the ever-eager learner that he was, he quickly grew bored of mechanical engineering and moved on to a small industry that was still a bit of a laughingstock at the time in his world. The study of dimensional energies. The people of his planet were just starting to discover things about other universes and the notion of different energies from different worlds and how they could be harnessed to incredible effects. Dresden was mind blown by these possibilities and was determined to become a leading professional in this budding industry. He became the first person to completely prove to his world that other dimensions existed and developed a way to travel between different dimensions and harness energies from those dimensions and from the creatures in those dimensions to bring back to his home world. And those energies could be used to do things like power cities or even potentially give people abilities. And while his discoveries were significant, he'd only cracked the surface of what the multiverse had to offer when his world was invaded by swarms of ash-coated monsters from other dimensions. He was admittedly more fascinated than anything by these creatures and managed to capture one in the midst of all the chaos. He quickly scraped together a machine to try and link his own body's simple human energies with this creature to see if he could learn anything from its mind that could teach him more about whatever dimension it was from. But when he turned on the machine, it didn't just link their minds, the bizarre energies from that creature shot through the device and infected Dresden's brain and body. The ashen energy seemed to take traits from Dresden's own form and the wings he wore on his back and the original creature and reshaped him into a kind of human-dragon hybrid. Which really Dresden would have loved if it weren't for the fact that all he could do was see through this new body, he couldn't control it. The body was under the control of the creature's original instincts, which were to follow a hive mind that was giving only one command, destroy. For weeks he watched without control as his body followed the other creatures to other dimensions and destroyed everything in sight, but eventually he came toe to toe with someone who could actually hold their own against him. Alexis, Jake, and Diamos were on a world that the creatures were invading, and they fought off Dresden's whole swarm and eventually went to fists with him. 
Alexis managed to bring him down, but he wasn't exploding into a cloud of ash like most of the other creatures they'd fought. Diemo soon realized that his energies were off and managed to subdue the monstrous energy that was now permanently planted into his brain. He became able to turn back and forth into the creature, though his instincts in that state were still to follow strict orders of a hive mind leader. Luckily, Diamos, having a strong knowledge of multiverse energy manipulation, could change that leader to anyone else besides Dresden. And in an attempt to gain Alexis's trust, Diamos linked command abilities to Alexis. So when in his dragon-like state, instead of trying to destroy things, Dresden would follow any orders that Alexis gave. Being a strong-willed individual, Dresden hated not having control over himself, but the things that he could now learn with this new team of dimension jumpers was too exhilarating to pass up. He joined the squad and together they continued the search for Alexis's old team while simultaneously trying to figure out the mysteries of the multiverse war for themselves. And that concludes the building of this ragtag, yet still decently balanced team of superheroes. Okay, now doing this has made me really want to go back to more of my stories from around the multiverse war and my original characters, because I have so many stories that I never utilized that were going to eventually happen in multiverse tales and I just didn't get to them. Let me know if people want more of this kind of stuff with the original characters. But anyway, now you have to go check out the second half of this video over on Ben Mellinger Art's channel. He's drawing all his characters facing off to the right, and in his video we've put the two pieces together so that it looks like one big epic battle about to take place. And while you're over there, make sure to check out a bunch of his other videos. He's got so much cool stuff. He's in the midst of doing an a thousand character drawing that's coming along really well, and he's got some videos about that. He drew Venom in 20 hours, 2 hours, 2 minutes, and 20 seconds. And he's got some really cool doodle art up there as well. I'll link his channel, and most specifically, his half of this video. And after that, any of you can get in on this battle as well. Over the next week or so, I'm going to be monitoring on Instagram anyone using hashtag ArtBattlePopCross. Anyone who posts their own superhero team facing off against mine, I'll go check it out and maybe I'll show a bunch of them on my channel on the next superheroes video. I've also put a download link to a high-res version of this artwork so that you can post your characters next to my characters, and then you can swipe between them on Instagram to take a look at how they look facing off with each other. I am so excited to see what other people come up with, but of course, if you haven't already, go check out the other half of the video on Ben Mellinger's channel. And to anyone here from Ben Mellinger's channel, thanks for coming to check out Popcross Studios. I do lots of pop culture crossover art. Usually I'm doing stuff like venomizing characters, putting characters in D&D or Star Wars. But anyway, take a look around. You might like what you see. But that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. And I will see you all in the next one. Hashtag Art Battle Popcross. Remember that. Goodbye, everybody.